Berlin, capital of Germany. We arrived by train on the ICE or Intercity Express, capable of 300 km per hour. Before we dive into this two-day visit, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button as fast as the ICE for more content. Off we go! On day one, we started with the Reichstag, the Federal Chancellery, and Brandenburg Gate, which are all in close proximity to each other. The Reichstag, of course, is where the German parliament would meet. It has its history from 1894 as the Imperial Diet until 1933, where it fell to disuse under the National Socialist regime. It only came back to usage after the German reunification. Its original dome was replaced by a glass dome in 1999. You could visit the dome if you book a ticket and time for free. Unfortunately, the one who booked the, tic the ticket made a typo and wrote the date before we planned to visit it. So, yeah, oh well. We're told you could see the apartment floor as well as the surrounding cityscape from it. Nearby the Reichstag is the Chancellery, where the Chancellor, currently Olaf Schlotz, I hope I pronounced that correctly, <laughs> would coordinate activities of the federal government. Quite a modern design! Next is the Brandenburg Gate. This gate was originally the city gate to Berlin from the town of Brandenburg an der Havel, former capital of Brandenburg. It is one of the greatest landmarks in Germany and Europe. Next, we visited the Memorial to the Murdered Jews of Europe, or the Holocaust Memorial. It is located near the Reichstag. It is made up of 2,711 concrete slabs. Originally, they wanted 4,000, but didn't have enough space for all that. And if you take a walk between the slabs, you may feel a sense of uneasiness and confusion. It may also resemble a cemetery. Of course, it is all up to interpretation, so make your own opinion about it. But of course, a moment of silence. Before moving on, as a Canadian, I had to grab a short clip of the embassy. <laughs> anyway, nearby that embassy was a small exhibition of the Berlin Wall, which divided Berlin from 1961 to 1989, during the latter part of the Cold War before reunification and fall of the Soviet Union. The next stop is the U.S. Checkpoint Charlie Museum of the Berlin Wall. But on the way, we, we saw the Bundesrat, or Federal Council, which represents the 16 federated states of Germany at the federal level. Now, at Checkpoint Charlie, we didn't go inside, but the outside showed the border and crossing on the American sector, and the Soviet sector, so here are some stills. Afterwards, we visited the inside of the Berlin Deutsche Dom, which had a free ex exhibit on the history of the German parliament. Inside, you can find a model of the Bundestag, the former Reichstag before 1933, the proposed Große Halle, or Volkshalle, in English it would be the People's Hall or Great Hall, which would have been the largest assembly hall in the world had Germany won the Second World War. The current German Chancellery sits at its proposed location. The rest of the exhibits were just walls of text, all in German. But you can easily find the info found there just by googling history of the German parliament or history of German politics. Next, we visited the glorious Berlin Cathedral, an ev evangelical church as well as the tomb of Hohenzollern. It wasn't always ev evangelical. When it was first constructed in 1454, it was Roman Catholic, and then Lutheran, Reformed, and finally Protestant United. You have to excuse me, my knowledge of various religious denominations is limited. Anyway, we had a short look around before climbing its tower, so here are some views from atop.
After descending, we visited the cake shop next to the staircase for some Black Forest cake or Svarsevalde Kirchetorte. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Alongside Apfelstrudel and some black tea. And after visiting the cathedral, we had a pint of ice cream. <laughs> too much sugar for one day. <laughs> we then visited the town hall, which I didn't see anything too significant inside other than this Lego replica. We then ended the day at the world clock at Alexander Platz, then did some shopping nearby. As for food, we didn't get any images because of various circumstances, to which prevented me from doing so. Therefore, I shall simply describe them to you. Lunch on day one was at Subway. The German menu was no different from the North American one, and I assume most of you know what the, a Subway sub looks like, so... The problem was there was an uh, incident. We bought a 30 centimeter sub, equivalent to the foot long, because metric, um, and they charged us for two 15 centimeter subs, which, when added together, would have been 1.5 euros more. <laughs> We were not okay with that, and after arguing for about two minutes, we got a refund and left. For dinner, we went to a small hole in the wall run by an elderly couple for double fried duck on rice with curry, and ate next to a guy drinking his sorrows away. Not exactly picturesque. Lunch on day two was dim sum, but it was like 14 o'clock, and we were hungry and, quite, and quickly ate it all. For dinner, I was tired and famished, so <laughs> unfortunately I did, did not remember much of it, but I think we had some uh, squid with broccoli. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> on day two, we started at the East Side Gallery, the largest open-air gallery in the world, painted on sections of the Berlin Wall. Painting started immediately as the wall came down, and this section was preserved Next to the gallery is the Wörschrochstrasse, or Ostbahnhof railway station, which looked pretty nice. Afterwards, we traveled to the Bernardstrasse, which had another memorial for the wall, this time showing tales of attempted escapes from the wall such as jumping from buildings next to the wall, which resulted in windows being bolted closed, as well as escaping under the wall. These stories made me think of the sad border between North and South Korea. Afterwards, we went to the Victory Column, or Siga Sala, I think, <laughs> and the nearby uh, gardens. Originally designed to commemorate the Prussian victory in the Second Schleswig, War in 1864, it gained new purpose when it was inaugurated in 1873, as Prussia also won against Austria in 1868 and France in 1871, but for the establishment of the German Empire. Speaking of the German Empire, in the gardens there is also a statue of Otto von Bismarck, who was an invaluable statesman during these times for Prussia and later the Empire. Other statues in the garden were just German field marshals, of which I didn't take any pictures of. Perhaps I should have. Next, we visited Charlottenburg Palace, named after Sophia Charlotte of Hanover, Queen Consort of Prussia. It is the largest surviving royal palace of Berlin. On the inside, we ran into a few problems. There was a distinct lack of directional arrows. To visit everything, of which many rooms were somewhat similar, we had to backtrack many times, and honestly, sometimes we felt lost. It did make me think that maybe those who lived here may have gotten lost in their own palaces. <laughs> the place was huge, no doubt. But one thing's for certain, this place was beautiful. We also learned Prussians adore Chinese and Japanese porcelain, which they purchased from the English and Dutch. I mean, look at this room. This was Queen Charlotte's personal collection. Other Prussian royalty likely had just as much, if not more. 
in the final rooms, we got to see one aspect the Prussians were very well known for. That they were not a state with an army, but that they were an army with a state. Here's the famous or infamous Pickerhaube, a parading Prussian army, Prussia in 1840, some imperial Prussian royal regalia, a painting of Wilhelm II, the final Kaiser of the German Empire, a massive painting of Frederick the Great, the greatest king of Prussia, some army figures used by the children of Prussian soldiers, and more paintings of various famous Prussian kings and German Kaisers, including the first German Kaiser, Wilhelm I. So that concludes my tale of my stay at Berlin. I hope you enjoyed this journey as much as I did. Next time it's Hamburg. So be sure to subscribe to not miss that in future videos. Bye now.